بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير خلق الله محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين Brothers and sisters, one of the important responsibilities in our society is to raise our kids in a proper, productive Islamic one. Because it does not make any sense to be a very productive father, making so much money, having so many patents in your name, inventing so many things, buying impressive stuff, yet your kids are not yours. In a way, they do not belong to you. They do not belong to your faith. They do not belong to your doctrine. And yet, they do not even know you. When we see so many challenges in the West, while raising the kids, so many questions has to be, so many questions have to be asked. And proper answers needed. Those challenges are creating so many issues and bad consequences in the society. So who is responsible? We are not here to blame the mother or the father, but we are here to discuss the role of the father, the role of the mother of having a good, this good functional family. A family that is living in peace, a family that lives in tranquility, a family that is very homogeneous, a family that each member in it knows his or her responsibility and supportive to the other, a family that is not another burden on the society, a family that once it is improved, the society is improved. So who is responsible? What's going on with our lives? When your kid is reaching 18 years old, 15 years old, we start seeing the parents rushing to the centers, to the mosques, to the sheikh. Oh, my kid is not good. Oh, my kid, my kid does not pray. Oh, my kid, you know, doing drugs. My kid doing this haram, that, so many issues, so many problems. So what's the solution? Brothers and sisters, we have so many things to talk about. But I want to pick a couple points. First, we have to find the preemptive solutions. From the beginning, before you get married, as I said before, before getting married, pick the proper wife and you pick the proper husband. Do not just be deceived by materialistics. Go beyond that. Do not just follow your emotion. Also, rational thinking is needed. Do not just listen to your friends. Also, consider what your parents are telling you. Maybe sometimes the peer pressure is not going to make you think it properly. Nothing wrong with it if you take a pen and a paper or use your computer nowadays, iPad, Note, Note Galaxy, whatever, and write down the features that you think is going to build a good family and is going to make my marriage lasting, functional one. 
good one, constructive one, that's gonna stay giving me and my kids love and mercy. This is the way you, nothing wrong with that. It's not you buy a TV, you can return it. It is a very divine responsibility. But let's say, on, on the top of that, you have to think about also the environment. The environment. One of the issues we have, okay, we have a person, let's say, in Europe or USA. He only knows English. He might know a couple words in Arabic. He wants to get married. He go, let's say, to Iraq, Lebanon, Syria, any Arabic country. Picks a wife. Oh, you know, he is rich. Or he's all set. So the wife, or his future wife, that lady, will say, oh, this is a good choice. And do you know English? No, I'm French educated. Or uh, maybe no French, no English. Yet, oh, you know what, marriage is good, you know, everything is good. Guess what? Give it some time. There is no communication. They do not know how to communicate with each other. Different languages. So this is also a factor you have to think of. Maybe the guy is very polite, very good, very pious. But that's not good enough. Maybe he has very good faith, but he is not intelligent. Intelligent, I'm talking about common stuff. I'm not talking about to be a genius. Having a degree that does not mean he's logical. And so many things. So you keep this in mind. This is a preemptive step. But let's say now we are married. And I need, now I have kids, and I need to take care of them. And I don't want to be like this ayah, فَخَلَفَ مِنْ بَعْضِ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْفٌ After them, a generation came. They did not pray. They did not pay khumus. They, they were not nice with the poor. They did not give out a charity. We don't want to be like this. I want my offspring, my kids, to continue my message. To be close to my faith. Not to be different culture, different background, different... Yes, there is a challenge, brothers and sisters. That is impossible. No matter what you do, your kids will be like you. It's impossible. It's impossible. And that's why we have some narrations from Imam Ali alayhi salam said, do not raise your kids. When you are raising your kids, do not use the same tools and expect the same consequences that you used to have when you were young. Some people, they say, oh, that's a good uh, excuse. So if I used to be muhajjaba, putting a scarf, no, I don't want to be muhajjaba now. Because the, uh, the imam is saying, this generation has different rules, different rituals than the previous generation. No, Imam is not talking about this. Imam is not talking about core values. It's, uh, Imam is not talking about important Islamic rulings. Imam is talking about certain traditions. If you used to like Football, that does not mean your son has to like football. Maybe he likes different game. So you do not force him to enjoy what you used use to enjoy. Talking about traditional stuff. Because tradition could get complicated, could change. But if you used to be honest, that does not mean to, lie, to let him lie. This is the, this is, this people sometimes, they mess it up. Or they want to mess it up. They want not to get it right. No, everyone has his own. There is a room for flexibility. But not when it comes to the core beliefs. Fasting, lying, going to Hajj, 
paying, being honest. Lying is haram. Being honest, you have to be not cheating. So many things. You cannot change them. Those, they have been from Adam all the time, all the way to this time. So this is, you keep it in mind. If you like certain colors, if you like, if you like certain fashion, if you like certain traditions, that does not mean your kids, they are going to like it. So be aware, the Imam saying, be aware, be a little bit flexible. That's, a, that's the idea. But not to a point, and here we start the important things. You are careless. Not to a point, you do not supervise what's going on. Not to a point you are detached from your kid's life. When you have kids, that means, first of all, you have to find the proper environment from them. Proper environment for every one of them. For you, for your wife, for, you, for the kids. As a father, what's your responsibility? Well, as you know, in Islam, as a father, as a husband first, you have a set of responsibilities. It is your responsibility to find a proper house for your wife and for your kids. It is your responsibility to go find a job and get the money to spend it on your wife and your kids. Whenever it is, whenever you are obligated. It is your, whenever you have to, it is your responsibility to take care of your wife to get her the proper clothes, proper medication, and so many things. You know, which is here, let me talk about this a little bit. Some people, they think Islam, what's Islam? Islam downgrade, is downgrading women. Really, how could that be? Oh, you know, you, a person, a woman in Islam has no rights. We're going to talk about this later on. Who said women in Islam has no, more, no rights? Who said that? As a wife in Islam, you have maybe rights more than what other civilizations are offering you or other legislations are you know, offering you. As a wife, you don't have to work. That does not mean you are not allowed to work. You don't have to work, but it's up to you. And let's say if you work, then that money is yours. The husband has no right to touch. It is in your account, period. It's up to you whether you want to spend it on, on the family or not. But it is not up to the husband to hide his money and make you hungry or starve. He has to find a job to bring food and put it on the table. He has to find a job so you can dress properly, so you can have the proper living, proper house or apartment. It's his job. It's up to you whether you want to cook or not. It's up to you whether you want to clean the, up the house or not. It's up to you whether you want to wash the dishes or not. It's up to you whether you want to breastfeed your kids or not. And if you want to ask for return, reward, you have the right. No one is forcing you. But why we usually do it? And here we start seeing why our families are dysfunctional. Because, brothers and sisters, I cannot make my house as a court. According to law number one, you do this. According to law number two, you do this. This, is, this family will never run. From the beginning, I know life is very challenging. And I know so many challenges are going to face my kids, especially when I'm raising them. I have so many intruders in my house. From internet, I have Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, internet itself. All this, they do not contain all the time a pure good information. Some of them are bad. So if I'm working and my wife is working, who's taking care of the kids? The maid? Well, then the maid is the mother. In certain times of life, yes, the, the man has to sacrifice and the woman has to sacrifice. Maybe they have to work. 
but not to a point guys not to a point you know will be like other guys brothers and sisters we have to be very careful here so what if I make money and I'm losing my kids so what if my wife is working in a company babysitting a computer and my kids I'm babysitting them with someone else is it life as I said sometimes there is a need super need that's a different story but if I'm working and my wife is working it's not I'm making money collecting money to spend it on something not that critical no, save the money because at the moment you have to work less so you have more time to spend with your kids. This is the proper formula. And therefore we have responsibilities from the father's side and we have responsibilities from the mother's side. So from the beginning I will tell my wife when my kids reach certain age, please consider that you are going to take care of the house. As companies, you have in companies, I might have a manager, a project manager, and I will have a functional manager. In the, in the way I'm raising my kids, I am the project manager, and you are the functional manager. You are very critical in the house. My job is to provide you with the sustenance. My job is with, to deal with people outside to find the proper legal money so you spend it properly and you take care of the kids. The bird cannot fly with one wing. It needs two wings and they have to be balanced. Someone inside and someone at outside. If both start working outside and no good person, no good family member is taking care of the kids. And the kids are 24 hours on TV and internet access. What do you think? What do you think? It's like they say, this is a joke. One time the mom took a day off. Usually the, she used to go to work. So the kids all the time are with the maid. Or with a babysitter, whatever you want to call it nowadays. Different culture, different, you know, naming. For some people, they have a maid in certain countries. Some people, they have babysitter. Or a family member, maybe. So that lady took a day off. And she was happy during her day off because today she can meet her kids when they come back from school. Guess what? She went with her maid or her babysitter, family member. She went outside waiting for the bus, school bus. Guess what? The kids, they came out of the bus happy, rushing toward her. She thought, wow, those are my kids. So she opened her hands to hug them. Guess what? The kids were opening their hand, hands to hug the babysitter, not the mom. Very disappointing. Very disappointing when your kids call the babysitter mom and listen to her and they do not listen to you. It's very dangerous. So the mom has to know her responsibilities. If you are sitting home, that's not something to be, that's not, I'm not downgrading you, Islam is saying. You're doing a sacred job. You're doing more important things than being a worker or an employee in a company. Over there, you are helping the company to make more money. And you are making more money so you can spend more. Better car, bigger house, better TV. Most of the time, more money is just to waste. Islam is telling you, why you want to do this? Yeah, it is your call. You are free to do whatever you want. But rather than spending your time and killing 
your youth in being an employee for your boss or for that company, why don't you hire yourself in a more sacred, productive, supportive thing, which is what? Raising your kids, being with them, helping them, teaching them, giving them your experience, showing them the right from the wrong. So at a point when you are old, there is strong connection between you and them. They will never leave you alone. But if you used to leave them, definitely there is a time they are going to leave you too. Which is now more important? We used to ask this question, brothers and sisters. I personally ask so many people about this. I was working in a company and I asked a lady, what time you show up here? She said, seven. I said, what about your kids? She said, oh, they are with the babysitter. Okay. So you are babysitting the computers and someone else is babysitting your kids. And then when they are old, you question, well, how come they leave you? Or how come they do not care about you? Imagine someone mentioned a story for me. One, in a, in a, that was in Detroit, Michigan. He said his neighbor was so happy. So he asked her why. He said, oh, my son sent me a greeting card. Uh, 35, 45 cents maybe. Really. She was very happy. He said, wow, must be a nice guy. Where does he live? Oh, he lives on the east side. I live on the west side. This is it. He does not even have time to visit his mom. Why? Because his mom did not have enough time to be with him. This is not accepted. This is not right. This is not going to take us to anywhere. No one can raise your kid as you do. And no one will give them the kindness that you have. Is, it is wrong to consider being with your kids something not right. No. Well, you, are, you, you can work part-time if you are in need. But once your kids are home, this is a sacred time, brothers and sisters. We sit together. If we can eat lunch together, that would be great. If not lunch, dinner. Breakfast, we show that we are one family. And being with them is not just to sit and they are sitting and you open the TV. This is also not right. You go to some families, they all surrounding the TV as if they are saying, or as if they were saying, We worship you and we get the support from you. We usually say that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدْ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينُ We only worship you and we only get the support from you. We come to a point, no, we do this to the TV. All the family members are surrounding and watching, that surrounded by the, you know, surrounding the TV. So that's TV, poor TV is the source of communication no one is talking to anyone. We are only listening to one source. And keep in mind, مَنْ أَصْغَى إِلَىٰ نَاطِقٍ فَقَدْ عَدَدَهُ When you are listening to someone, you are worshipping him. This is a process of worshipping, let me say, if I want to translate it right. If the, that person is talking right, then you are worshipping God. If he is talking in a bad way, saying bad things, then you are worshipping the devil. And the TV is the same thing, brothers and sisters. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته